Yo guys, welcome back to some more Country Kid Gaming. I don't know, for some reason my mic yeah, disappeared or something right there. Uh, we're back playing some more Dark Souls 3. Like I said, just putting these older games on the channel. Lightning Gym is the best looking, one of the best looking like um, upgrades. Like, I would say almost all the upgrades in this game that are unique looking look better than most upgrades, even in, even compared to Elden Ring. Since, you know, Elden Ring, you really use the Ashes of War, so you don't have to use art and stuff like that, which I actually like their system and stuff. But, uh, it's just some of the best looking upgrades. I think Bloodborne also got some pretty unique looking upgrades. As well. But, um, I don't know. And then the Lightning Gem is probably the best looking upgrade in general. Just to me, you know. It depends on what you like. Some people might like the Chaos Gems or... But then I want to say... I don't have a Chaos Gem yet. But I want to say it's not too much different than the Crystal Gem. But I at least like it that they... It's not the exact same thing. Like, they're both different type of um, gems that you would find in real life. Like... There are crystals that look like this. Um, there's some candy that looks like this too. That's like based off um, different stalactites and stalagmites and other type of gems that are like metamorphosis uh, when it comes to different types of things. That look the shapes and stuff look pretty weird or look different. So I think those are pretty cool. But like even when you think about games and you know graphics and stuff fade over time and stuff's gonna look not as good as it did when it first came out. But the art design for a lot of stuff still looks amazing, you know. They put it together like that. You know, nobody can tell me better. <laughs> nobody can tell me something different, I mean, not better. Now, you may not like the design for some stuff. And you may not agree with me, of course, but... And nobody made me change my mind on it. Yeah, this is some of the best designs. But you can always disagree. But to me, it's always going to be like that. But there's nothing like playing the, your, a FromSoft game for the first time. Because even when I did my uh, different runs in Elden Ring, it still, didn't, it still didn't feel the same. Like, the first time you play a new game, the game looks, to me, I don't know how to explain it, but it looks and feels different from the second time. Like, it feels like, is this really the same game I played for the first time? Like, the game is still good and it's still great because you play it again. But it's like, the, it just sounds different. The cutscenes look different. They sound different. The movie, I don't know how to explain it. It's like a whole different experience after the first time. It just doesn't feel as great. But the game still feels good. That's why uh, I would say these older games have a bit more playability because they're smaller. But uh, I love games that just keep going. Like for me, I, if, if I could play a game that if somebody was like, okay, the minimum amount of time is 80 hours. Most games ain't going to say that because, you know, most people want to play a game that's like 30 to 40 hours and then 80 hours with side content or over 100 hours with side content. So, if somebody was to come out for me, I would love somebody to be like, okay, so defeat this main part of the game, it's going to take you 80 hours. And then, if you want to find everything, it's going to take you like 500 hours. I know, a lot of people are like, oh, that's too much, that's too long, that's too much content. But at the end of the day, when you like games, and you really enjoy them, you pretty much spend hours playing them anyway with either mods or second playthroughs or whatever the case may be. So. Like, if I can play a game that never stops, but most games that you hear, like, oh, the game never stops, are mostly, um, ARPGs. Because you have different seasons and a bunch of different stuff happening. Or games that simply have an online feature to where, um, it's an MMO, and then things just keep getting added, stuff like that. Those are games you think about that you play for thousands of hours. But I would love to just play a game that's kind of like the how old Final Fantasy used to be. It's like, oh, this got two discs, or oh, this one's got more than two discs, you know what I mean? 
but I know I'm probably one of the only people, not not the only person, but I know I'm one of the only few that are like that. That would be like I would play a game if FromSoft came out and be like this is the longest game to date, not just the biggest. They'd be like this is the game with the most content. It's gonna take you about 70 hours to beat the main storyline, and then with just the stuff that we expect you to find to deal with, it might be 200, 300 hours. But if you you might take you over a thousand hours before you find every little hidden detail. I would love games like that. That's just me. Because even thinking about Elden Ring, because I think about how many characters I've had, I at least have spent 800 to 1,000 hours in Elden Ring since it came out. And obviously, um, I spent much more on these older games just simply because of the fact that how the releases were. So it's like, when Elden Ring gets kind of... I want to get burnt out more quickly, but the game has so much content in it. I'm not one of the people that I can only just do the main storyline. I'm gonna be doing all the dungeons again, and you know what I'm saying? Like this is me, like going through everything again. And you, you can you can burn yourself out like that. So I try not to let that affect me. So, like I still love Elden Ring, but I haven't played it as much as these older games because I feel like I will burn myself out. And that's just you know me being 100% honest with it. I think just me and um, Andre would be enough. Or Andre, I don't know why I'm saying Andre. But I, I love games that are just long. Like I can buy a game and I can play the game for months on end and I'm still not done with the game. I like that. But most games I'm finishing in the first month or maybe the second month, depending on if multiple games come out at once. Because once you start playing a game, it's hard to just play only a certain amount of time, except, you know, you have days when stuff happens. But it's hard to be like, okay, I'm only going to play this game four hours a day, so it'll last a long time. It doesn't feel authentic. It's always going to be like, oh, let me play a bit more, let me get this boss, and then I'll stop, and stuff like that, so... That's my only problem. I don't have restraint, but I think most people don't have restraint when you're enjoying the game. Those can bleed as well. Even though I'm not doing that much damage, the bleed is going to be I want to say uh, Garat should be back. Gray Rat. I don't know why I said Garat. <laughs> Think about something else. Oh, he's not back yet. I know they didn't kill him because I went to the Profane Capital first because I did uh, Old Bunny's uh, sick where his whole quest line. So it shouldn't be the case because he should have saved him. Uh, is it the Pontiff's Great Sword or 
let's see what it's called. I think it's kind of not underrated. I kind of think it's underwhelming. Like you would think that because um how the ultra great sword works. I don't remember what the name of that is. It's pretty good, you know. You can use a strong attack and then you can buff the weapon with fire. You know, it's not you know super amazing, but it's pretty Actually. decent. But this one, you pretty much just buff it with magic, the uh, great sword of judgment. But it kind of feel like it could have been had a different type of um, move set to make it a little bit better. Cause even this one, it's like buffing it with fire. It's good because it also leaves like I think this one leaves a trail of fire if I don't remember as well. Or, no, the strong attacks automatically become fire, which is pretty cool. But this one, you just simply have to use the... What's it called in this one? It's not called Weapon Art, is it? I think it is called a Weapon Arts in this one. They're Ashes of War Elder. When you do Stance of Judgment, then it buffs the weapon. They could at least have did the same for this one, but I don't remember this one working like that. And then this one's more of a magic weapon. But this is actually... The Profane Greatsword is actually one of my favorite Greatswords. Treat you. I might actually even swap to it later on. That's one reason why I went ahead and got it. Uh huh. What, I got seven? Uh, that's not enough. Well, I think it's what, two, then four, then six, and then you need more than that? Of this, you can buy upgrade materials, so. Um, let's see. That's one thing they did better than, um,. Dark Souls 2, because in Dark Souls 2, you could only keep forming them using bonfire aesthetics, but you can only buy a certain amount of Twinkling Titanite and Demon Titanite, I believe that's what it's called. Or Dragon, Pitch by Dragon Bone, that's what it was in Dark Souls 2. So it's kind of like, they fixed that, and I'm glad in Elden Ring, you know. I am kind of on the fence about how these games do upgrades in general, especially in Elden Ring, like, because you have to wait to the end of the game to be able to get a plus, well, there's some things you can get early on, depending on if you go to the Lord of Blood, you can get a plus 10 weapon, like, about halfway, or right before the halfway mark, but it's only one, and that's, you know, and then you can only do a limited amount. I would love them for you can be able to infinitely buy Ancient Dragon Stones, and, uh, what's it, Sober Ancient Dragon Stones, or, I can't remember what the other one's called, Sober Ancient Stone, or whatever. I think you should be able to buy those so that way you can upgrade everything today if you got the runes to it because you still got to work for the runes. And then I think it should be about 60% of the game to be able to get that instead of at the end of the game because it doesn't really trivialize anything because the difficulty is still there. You can have a plus 10 weapon and not have the stats to make that weapon the best weapon. You still won't even be able to, to wield some of the weapons before you get 50 strength or 60 intelligence, whatever the case may be. So it's like instead of waiting to basically get to about 70 80 percent of the game before you really start getting the multiple weapons to be upgraded all the way it's kind of just i don't know this is how i feel about it i don't really agree with it in general it's not really a, a harm soft thing a lot of games do that it's kind of like we're gonna make sure you're not really as powerful as you can be to the end but at the same time there's really not a difference because even if it's like when you find a, a sword early on in the game which you need 80 strength you ain't gonna be able to use it even if they give it to you early so it's like even if you allow me to have the materials, I think I gotta go up first. Even if you allow me to have the materials, it's like, I can't use them until I got a plus nine anyway. So it's like, at least allow me to do it. Allow me to buy a lot of them because the thing about having a game uh, like this is the player's choice. You know what I'm saying? The, the freedom of playing things. So it's kind of like, okay, if I want to upgrade every single weapon, and try out every single weapon, halfway through my playthrough, or well, the weapons that I have found, obviously it's not going to be every single weapon, I should be able to upgrade them all to plus 10. I shouldn't have to, you know, be like, damn, I got to play another playthrough to do it. Um, maybe in these older games, it's kind of okay, but it's kind of like this game, like Elden Ring is so big, and the game um, lasts so long, especially if you're finding like, all the content. It's like, I can only upgrade, I want to say it's about, if I remember correctly, uh, somewhere around, it may be 11 weapons for using the ancient smithing stone or something like that. Hold on, I'm actually, well, I don't want to pull up Elden Ring because it's going to kick me out of uh, Dark Souls. It's not one of the games you can pick resume between um, the FarmSoft games. It'll kick you out. Uh, even though I'm playing uh, offline. Like I said, at the end of this session, I gotta go go ahead and get my card and pay for that. Oh, let me see. 
sitting here and thinking about it. I want to say it's about 11. I think you can get 11 of each. The ancient stones and the sober stones. It's somewhere around there. You can only do, like, if you put both of them together, it's less than 30 weapons in total. Whether they're used sober stones or they're regular ancient stones or whatever. It's about that. It's about somewhere there. It's less than 30 weapons. So it's kind of like... The game has over 100 weapons, I have to pick and choose, but I kind of understand that because they're like, they want you to make a build and you just can't automatically keep switching builds all the time. That's why that limits you always with, um, not pill tones, what they're called, you know what I mean? Uh, I just was using it too because I just switched my Eldering characters mods back to magic because I have one character that's strength. But that character doesn't have any more law materials. That's what it is. So yeah, they only give you a limited amount of law materials. I think it's like 15. So you can only make about 15 different builds. And you know, that's plenty. You know, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying like it's not enough in the sense of for the average player. But for people who want to keep playing the game and try different builds, I would like this to have a limited amount. Even if it's like a rare form, just allow me to do that. But I understand it at the same time. You don't want to give the player too much choice. Cause then there's no, uh, it's really no firm foundation, and they might not finish the game. You know what I'm saying? Or they might end up with a build that they just don't work because they just keep swapping so much. So it makes you have to take more time to think about how you want to make your build fleshed out and not actually a viable build. But but then you see mods and where people can automatically change stuff all the time. And people still end up doing a playthrough of it. So I understand it. I just don't agree with it. The fact that you can keep blocking me is crazy. Or interrupting me is crazy. Why do I feel like he's playing so defensively on the low? Like, he was playing aggressive at the same time he was backing up so much. They got infinite MP. They're not running out of their skill.
But yeah. I think, I think they call it smithing, ancient smithing stone. It's the big one, but I think they just call it smithing stones and then sobering stones. Or sobering smithing stones. Either way it goes. Or somber smithing stones. I would just love to see an unlimited supply of it in the next game. Because the word is that the next game is going to be a more of like mage souls. Like something that focuses on magic. Obviously not going to be called mage souls. Um, I forgot what the code name was for it was, but I try not to pay attention to leaks too much, especially if it ends up being correct, because that's basically spoiling yourself. But n not really no knowing that really doesn't tell you that much, because you're gonna find that out anyway when you do the trailer. So, but at the same time, it could be wrong, and then I don't know anything about the game other than that it's supposed to focus on magic. That doesn't really tell you much, because a lot of these games have magic, but for it to be magic, be like at the the forefront of it, the major thing about it, it's kind of just like, uh, it doesn't really tell me too much. Because there's games like Harry Potter where magic's in the front place of it, but there's no way they're going to make a game like Harry Potter. At least I don't think so. So, it's kind of like, what is it going to be like? Just knowing that it really doesn't tell me too much. And then, are they going to stick to, like, knights and stuff like magic in this era, like medieval times, or... Are they going to get close to more like the, I guess, Vatican slash medieval, or not medieval, like Vatican, a little bit later times, like, sort of like, um, Bloodborne, or like, I don't know why I'm saying Vatican. That just reminds me of the Vatican and stuff like that, like, the architects and stuff like that from Bloodborne. This is what I think of. That's not really what it's called, like, the, uh, area of time and stuff like that. <laughs> I don't actually know what to, what to call it. I can't really remember it, because I know, but... It is what it is, but you know what I mean. Like that look of blood. Is it gonna be like that? Or... I don't think they're ever go modern or futuristic. I don't really see farm software. Going. But you never know. Look at surprises. I would think it would be somewhere towards the end of medieval times, like the era they would do. Like, I guess Bloodborne would be what is it? Sort of like pre-industrial, or or would it be industrial? Would that be really or medieval industrial? Like would it be like the, the entrance and stuff? So let me know down below. But uh, I just wonder what the next like, what's it gonna look like? I actually would like the Elden Ring 2, you can just do the um, the Shattering War. That's what I would prefer. But that's just me, you know. A new IP is pretty good too. Especially, uh, I don't think it'll be like the combination, like how Elden Ring was the combination of the Soul series, plus Bloodborne, plus um, Demon Souls, plus um, Sekiro, like they added something from all their games. Well, I heard some of it even got stuff that's, like, not exactly from Kingsfield, but reminiscent of it. So, I guess all the games they've made, like, RPG-wise. And, um, I just wonder what it's going to be like. There's a... I want to say, usually, depending on the day, I might record somewhere between... A bad day, like where if I got stuff going on, I'm only do like three episodes, especially if it's like hour long episodes. But like, usually I do like three hour episodes when it's older games or games that uh take a long time to beat. But then for I decide just to do an hour for these episodes because sometimes the longer episodes, depending on what it is, it might cover too much at once. Well, I won't say too much. I guess it just depends on the person watching it. So, uh, but usually I record probably about. If it was one hour episodes, ten hour, ten episodes. If it's three hour episodes, of only about three, or probably like twelve hours, and because then it's like a three hour. And I can pause the video and all that stuff like that. But the episodes would be like three hours, so about three episodes per day. So usually I record anywhere from ten to twelve hours per day. But it dep it just depends on my back too as well, because even if I could take breaks, if my back is bothering me, then I might just do what, what would be usually two episodes of long episodes, which is the six hours, or 
it'll be six episodes, that type of thing. So sometimes I can do a session and uh, you'll see it and it might be, a, a, I might make it public another day, but I didn't upload them all of them on the same day. Cause right now I'm playing this and Lords of the Fallen at the same time, so I'm probably gonna upload like, I would probably say split the sessions and do like seven of each. So seven hours of this and seven hours of Lords of Fallen. Or I might do probably less of Lords of the Fallen because I enjoy this more than Lords of the Fallen. But I prefer looking at Lords of the Fallen because uh, at least now the quality of the game is, is better than this. Because <laughs> that didn't fix a lot of stuff about the game. Uh, no matter, not the quality. The quality of the image of the game, like the graphics. I'm not talking about like the quality. I still prefer this over Lords of the Fallen. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> But Lords of the Fallen is more of a new game, and uh, I played and found everything just about inside that world too, other than the new stuff they added. So that's more of me going back to the game after I stopped playing because I was going to work on the platinum for the game, but then it was just giving me too many problems in you know? us. So now I am playing it again, but I'm taking it real slow. So, but I had thought, you know, I probably could split this game evenly, but I'm still enjoying this more than that because I'm still having problems with Wizard of Fallen when I'm swapping between uh, the Umbra world and stuff. The game still acts like it's a crash and uh, there's still some problems, you know, with the game. Even though this was the last update, I thought it just meant like the last. Uh... Well, I guess update would be the word. But I don't think they mean they won't be doing no more patches. Uh, but somebody said this is the last update period means no more patches also as well. Because patches usually come in the form of updates. So, because I was just like, there's no way that the game's not completely fixed. Like, a lot of stuff is fixed, don't get me wrong. But there's no way they can think that everything is fixed. But I've actually heard that this is the last anything. Like, they won't be updating anything unless there's some major problem. So, I guess we'll see. And I just, that didn't really make sense to me sense to me because I'm like there's no way that this is going to be everything but I've heard that that actually is the case so we'll see if that that's the truth or not if it is it's kind of sad to me because I'm just like the game is not complete you know there's still stuff that needs to be fixed with it but it is what it is at the end of the day. Can't force nobody to, to work on something. Oops. I thought I was pressing start, but I pressed the screenshot, but even though pressing start wouldn't have done nothing. But I still said Lords of Fallen's an okay game, you know, even with all the problems, it's just not the best game, but you can have a good time with it, depending on how many problems you experience, basically. But the game at its core is a decent game. But I still, I just, I think this game is better still, you know? But visually, like I said, I do like the way it looks. Now, especially since I'm not having no visual bugs, Compared to this, but this game is older, so it's always going to be like that. But if I were to put this on a tier list, I was I would say Dark Souls 3 for me is an 8 out of 10. Lords of the Fallen was a 5 out of 10 because I had that glitch that reset my character. It, but without the glitch, it's like a 6 out of 10. So this game still, to me, is better. But I'm still enjoying playing Lords of the Fallen again now that it seems like they didn't fix some stuff. 
So, but I'm playing it slower. Okay, be careful. Like, like, if you don't see it on the channel, it's because something happened and changed my mind. Like, it just started crashing all the time. But they said the crash chances are supposed to be less than um, 1%. That's that's what they said. Quote them, not me. So we'll see if that holds up. Well, better than hate. Farewell, I should make. How much strength do I have? Two. I can just switch to extreme later on. Besides, like I said, at least these two areas are going to be blood, but then I might switch to strength after this. Because a demon area, well, a lot of those are resistant to fire, but they st you still get to good damage when it's like pure strength. And I believe that the profane great sword is that what it's called. It's a pure strength and it just buffs the weapon with fire, so it's still a viable weapon. And again, I could just rock this one. <laughs> Straight sword. Okay, let's see. We're gonna make it. If you can tell I'm tired, though, I'm got foot in the mouth. <laughs> Having trouble getting my words up. I had took these meds because my headaches super bad last night. Mm. Anyways, the way I record this and upload it, like you usually won't see it because I'm still up, I'm still making uh not uploading but making Dark Souls 2 public right now. So by the time you see this, it's gonna be like a week or two after the episode. So it'll all just flow together anyway. Cause I really could split the episode up for like two weeks, but you wouldn't really know the difference. I guess the only way you would know the difference is if I like had a cold or something, or I was real sick, I guess you could notice. Or if I mentioned what, what, what today's date is and stuff like that. But YouTube has this weird thing where it asks you when your upload date is, but it only shows you the day you made it public. On, uh, on YouTube. You know what, let me double check that to make sure what I just said was correct, because that's pretty sure okay so like today I made a video public it is um, it's a Dark Souls 2 episode one of the episodes I made public today right that's what my recording date was I put that in there and then if I go to the video it says okay it's, it doesn't even have a time on it just says four hours ago So it's like, yeah, it's not going to show them the actual day I, I recorded it, or, yeah, even though it's asking me the day I recorded it, that doesn't show up. It only shows up the day that you made it, uh, not even the day you upload it, just the day you made it public. So I guess I just want it to be there for a reference, so it'll be on the video to let you know, but you only see it on the editing part. You don't actually see it on the part that everybody else sees, so I always thought that was weird. And then even if I uploaded the video and it was a private video, I still uploaded it. So you would think that that would be the date they showed up, but because people can still watch private videos, they just have to have access to your private videos. And then you can also make it to where only people that you give access can watch it. As in, like it'll say private, uh, private, and I think custom. So basically, like private anybody that give access to private it's only it's a harder way to do it but then people will be able to privately view it but the custom one's an easier way to do it so like um, I don't know anything about memberships or anything like that I don't have anything like that on my channel right now but um you basically can make it to where let me get down here I'm trying not to die as I unlisted is, is what the name is not custom it's called unlisted and then there's a specific way to how people can use that but private is usually more for like if you have somebody you trust and you want them to see the video for whatever reason and i believe if i remember this correctly and then i'll probably have to look at it again and get this exact but i think unlisted is the one where 
it'll say certain people can check this out, blase, 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 and private some of the people who have access to your private video. But I usually just go private that way if I need to edit the video after I upload it, because you can use a, a, a video editor before you upload it. So that way you can not have to worry about copyright strikes or anything like that. Because if you upload to YouTube, even though they give you a chance to upload to uh, um, edit the video in the studio, YouTube studio, you still can end up you usually end up with a copyright strike or a copyright claim if the video is going to be copyright or claim as you raw edit it, like just a raw upload. I mean, the video, right? So let's say it's going to be copyright strike. You didn't edit the video, then you can go in the YouTube thing and take out whatever got copyright strike. But you also can just upload an edited video on the video, and whatever edit video you use, whatever which one you use. I don't know which one you guys use, so <laughs> that way I wouldn't be able to explain it like that. And that's what people usually do, like if they do like movies or some stuff like that. Uh, I think one is called Prepper. That's a couple other ones that I know about. But basically, like either they get somebody else to edit them or they edit them, so that way you don't have to worry about the copyright strikes. And sometimes it'll still get striked, and you still got to edit the video, but. Usually what I do is I upload the raw version and I just edit it in YouTube studio unless I need to combine videos Then I'll edit it outside of that So that's how I usually do my videos I just edit it in a YouTube video because usually I just cut out the stuff that Either uh, uh, let's say the video was only meant to be an hour long But now it's like eight hours long or I go back and watch and listen to the video Then I realized that whatever I was saying wasn't coming across clearly at all I'll just delete it out the video because there ain't no point to keep it in there unless it's like doing a, a big fight or something like that then I'll leave it in there and that's what I need to do on YouTube it's rare that I ever edit a video in the editor and then upload it the only time that I would do that is if, if something occurred to where I'm just like okay I can't upload this to YouTube because it's gonna cause me to have a problem and some of my videos like as you know another reason why I had to stop was I don't think this does anything. I don't remember. But basically, my um, videos, I had the reason why I had to stop uploading is because I had two copyright strikes. And I had some other stuff happen personally, but the copyright strikes I got were for videos that were over a year old. And there were some of my videos that had the most views, so I ended up deleting them, which makes you lose your views on your channel. And it was like, the videos were copyright strike by a certain channel. I'm not going to really go into details about it. It was only a couple of them. And, but a couple of them got uh, took down or it was saying they would be actually getting it. So I just deleted all of them that had to do with that person and other videos. And it was like, but there were still other people who channel have those videos and they're not copyright strikes. They're on the channel. There's no problem. So I was like, why wait a year to copyright me on, on videos that, that really just brought more people to your channel? I'm not saying like my channel is big enough to where I'm bringing you an audience or nothing like that. I'm not saying that. But it, uh, and in the videos, I gave what the channel was in the description, on the title, and I would talk about how this person is one of my favorite YouTubers and all this stuff like that. And it's like I understand people don't want to think, oh, you're profiting out of you know my videos, but I'm not making no money off YouTube right now. I'm just you know I was just reacting to a video I think people would like. And then and then some of them didn't make sense why I got copyright strikes because not only one the other people react to them is some of them they were. They wanted people to react to them. Not this, not the same person, but some other stuff that I was going to get copyrighted strike for. But I just deleted the video and I didn't have to worry about it. Because after I got them two strikes, I, I got warnings. It's like two of them I got strikes for immediately. And then other ones, I kept getting a warning pop up, a warning pop up. So I was like, okay, let me just delete them all. I ain't got to worry about it. And then, like if I go to my dashboard right now. Okay, so it's no longer on my channel, so I don't know if those strikes are gone or not. And I don't remember how to check. Hold on, let me go to copyright. So I have no removal requests. And it, it looks like it's been, now it's been official the 60 days, because it, it happened a while ago. Nothing to see here. So I don't think I have any more problems anymore. The strikes I think are going off my channel. So that's good. But that's reason that's one reason I had stopped is because I was getting them and I'm just like, it doesn't make sense. When other people are reacting to your videos. And then I, I would get copyright strikes for videos I seen other people react to that, that I knew were safe. But then I guess it was just a certain part of my video they didn't like. 
and sometimes it'd be the ads on the videos that'll pop up like a copyright of uh, not a strike but a uh, claim or whatnot and I would be like why are you copyright claiming this video for an ad that you forced me to watch and then I like pause on OBS for the ad it's only showing like two seconds of the ad and it's still trying to give me for it so what I usually do now is if I react to something it's usually only a new game trailers I don't react to uh, any type of uh, content on my channel since those uh, two, since those two claims because I like I don't want my channel to get taken away because regardless even though I'm trying to get back in the algorithm I've still been working on the channel for a long time before I had my new my uh, rebrand and all this stuff like that before that changing like my name and coming back after all the stuff I had happened to me YouTube was important thing to me so I was like alright come back I know it's gonna it's gonna be a little take a little while for me to get back in the algorithm and all this stuff like that because a lot of the content now, people are doing the same type of content, and mostly only certain people of a certain age are watching certain things. And it's like that's not me, so I'm not gonna just start doing something totally. That's that's not who I am. You know what I'm saying? Just to get back in the algorithm, because I see a lot of people do that. And like, you see a lot of people copy the way people make their videos and stuff like that. I'm not that person, so I'm like, I'm not gonna do that. I may try some new things to go back to react to some more things, like. I usually just stick to reacting to video game trailers and sometimes movie trailers and show trailers uh, but then I know sometimes they play music in those so usually I can just mute those and stuff like that and that's not a problem but I try to stay away from anything that's going to get me striked that I know for sure you know what I mean because at first I didn't think I was going to be striked by a lot of stuff like, like once I was reacting to a bunch of short films and now I have to take a bunch of them down even though they got a lot of views tons of views thousands of views but then one person was like, they wanted me Not to react to their short school. film, and they had one of the short films with the. Oh, if I. Long ago, now, so it long Ed, may I post up? Oh, my <laughs> well. <laughs> Off so soon, maybe. I had one of the. Um, it was one of the biggest uh, short films I had watched with the most views and so. stuff. And then the owner was like, they wanted me to watch it. And then a bunch of them, uh, not said the same thing, but a bunch of them on the descriptions of the video, they didn't care if people react to it and stuff like that because it brings more views to their channel overall. And it just kind of felt weird that I started getting a whole bunch of, not strikes, but people telling me they wanted me to take down the videos of short films. When I've seen other people react to them, which is why I was like, Mm, let me see what these are and I didn't react to the same videos that other people reacted to I was just like oh I want to watch these and I reacted to some of those because I was already reacting to ones on another channel and I'm just like I kind of understand it that people don't want people to react to their content because I feel like you're still in their content at the end of the day and I can understand that but some stuff is like why copyright a, a super small basically insignificant channel and, but you don't do bigger channels or certain channels, why don't you just copyright everybody? It don't really make sense. And then you do it a year afterwards, but then people are still ready to see your videos now and there's no problem. I don't understand it. And in their videos, they don't even have your name in the title or your, or your stuff in the description. I'm like, I got your stuff in the description, your name on the title. I'm talking about, oh, this is channel, y'all should go watch this, all this stuff like that. You know, not a market's cut suit, all this stuff like that. And I still was getting striked, so I'm like, the way I'm doing it must just be wrong compared to these, these other people who are doing things. So I was just like, you know what, I'm going to just stick to mainly reacting to stuff I know is safe, like major video game uh, trailers and stuff like that. And then the mainstream uh, movies and TV shows, nothing that's like made by a content creator on YouTube. I'm like, I'm not reacting to that stuff anymore because it just, yeah, I've lost about 20 videos and I lost about 50 to 70,000 views from that because the views go away when you delete them so I mean, it is what it is but that's a lot when you are a small YouTube channel so hold on I'll be right back because these videos were the videos that had the most views because you know YouTube you can well, when you upload on YouTube you can check uh, videos by the date or views and right now I have I have six, hold on let me adjust this Because uh, it only shows you the amount of videos you have when you're on your first page. You're going to do 50 per page. You have to actually scroll to the end, or the beginning, I should say, to see how many videos you actually have now. 
So like I said, I had to delete all that. And I deleted my very older videos when I changed my name and all this stuff like that. Now those views I knew I was going to lose, but those were views that wasn't that, wasn't that much anyway. And they were, some of them were incomplete playthroughs of stuff I wasn't going to ever finish. So I was like, there's no point for me to keep this. So 681 videos right now currently. And, but I used to have more than that. And then if I go to my channel to see what you guys see, because it's going to be different when I look at it. Okay, because of the channel, this video that's on my main channel, not my main channel, the video that's on my channel homepage right now is has 9,000 something views. And then let me click on my, my thing. It says I have 835 videos, but I don't have 835 videos. But then again, they could be in count on my shorts. So, but it should have been more than that. Like how it says I have right now, basically 160,000 views when it was closer to 200,000 at the point in time but then i had i lost the videos and lost that content but either way it goes you know i still got a small channel so it, do, it doesn't really hurt me because the copyright strikes you just can't get three so once i stopped uploading i didn't have to worry about it and i had to start just deleting videos i even deleted videos that i didn't even that I didn't want to take the chance on getting a strike or a claim on because they were either by the same content creator or they were um the same type of video. It wasn't even the same content person, but I was like, you know what? Let me delete anything that I think somebody might copyright strike before I get it. You don't, you think that what I'm doing is still in your content? So, okay, I understand that. Even though other people are allowed to, to react to it, it's kind of weird. So I was like, you know what? It's all good. Uh, I don't know why you would pick my channel is basically what I'm saying to pick on, but then you let other people do it. It just didn't make sense for me. It didn't really sit right with me, so. It is what it is, though. So I just kind of gave up on it. And then I had other stuff going on. So I was like, yeah, I got to take a break from YouTube. Because I was just like, I'm going to end up, you know, I could possibly lose my channel. And by the time some people watch this video, you know, you may watch it when it's only one view. Or you may be watching this when it's thousands of views or hundred thousand views. I don't know. Because I don't know if my channel is going to be a channel that's considered to be successful. Or if it's a channel that's not. But I always told myself I would give myself two years of um, consistent uploading. But like I said, I had to stop twice. And it's 2024 right now, so. Oh, excuse me. If my channel is not successful by 2026, then I'll probably stop uploading as much. Because there won't be no point to because I've done it enough, even though I had breaks in between, to know that YouTube's just not going to be a successful thing for me. Even though some people, I don't really have the luxury of, you know, being the person that it took five to ten years before my YouTube popped up. I don't really have that luxury because of, you know, age and stuff like this. This isn't like I started in my early 20s, you know, I started in my late 20s. And I really regret that because I'm like, I could have started a long time ago. Because I, I know for a fact that every game that I play, there are some games I'm way better than with others. I would say these are the games that I'm best at, games that are hard and challenging, but I'm a, I'm a pretty good gamer. I would say in terms of gaming, if we had a, I won't say stuff about if you're an average gamer or stuff like that, I would say you would have low tier gamers, uh, mid tier gamers, and high tier gamers, and then the greats. I would say I'm a high tier gamer. Like, without a doubt. I can pretty much beat any game I play. It doesn't matter what type of genre it is, what it is. If it's a campaign, if it's multiplayer, I can get up into high into the rankings no matter what the game is. Um, like, if it's on Call of Duty, I'm always at the top of the scoreboards. I got hundreds of thousands of screenshots over the time where I'm always at the top of the board. So, I know people will say stuff about skill-based matchmaking, but if I'm always at the top, that means I'm always going to be playing the sweatiest of lobbies, so that doesn't really count. You know, but I don't never play the games to be a pro or anything like that's not really, you know, I've never really had time for this, especially now because, you know, I'm older now, you know, I'm 32. So for me, it's like I, if I had started 22 years ago, it wouldn't have mattered if it took me to my 30s to make it on YouTube because that's what it is. But I'm 32. Like, like I said, I'll give this to I'm 34 before I'm just like, all right, you know, and YouTube isn't the only thing I do. So 
I'm also a photographer, even though I haven't taken a hiatus for some health issues and stuff like that. But I'm trying to get back back into that mode and stuff like that. Like I'm an art collector too and some other stuff. Excuse me. So for me, YouTube is just like, if it works, it works because it's something I always wanted to do. But I always got delayed with stuff. And part of it was when I was younger, I listened to people I shouldn't have listened to. Because at the end of the day, none of the stuff they told me really could work out that way because I had some health issues and some other stuff happened to me to where I couldn't even do what they what what they were trying to say oh this is probably the best path for you and you know and on paper it would sound good and stuff like that but none of that mattered because of some of the stuff that happened to me I could no longer do those things so it was pretty much a waste of time <laughs> so it was like the things that I wanted to do outside of basically things that I thought were okay but not necessarily what I love to do, but you know how sometimes you just do a job or you do things because you know it'll be successful. It may not be the most successful, you may not be rich from it, you may not be this from it or that from it. But at the end of the day, it's going to do well, it may not be the end all be all, but it's going to do this. I wasted time doing those things and doing what people listen to advice of people that gave good advice to people that I respect. But because of certain situations, nothing that I was trying to do worked out. Nothing that I wanted to do personally or what they wanted me to do because of certain circumstances. So instead of doing the things that I love, I waited till my late twenties to start trying to do those things. And some of it was successful right away, but then I had something happen. You know, I had this big old health issue, so I had to stop with that. And I had some other stuff happen, some legal stuff, nothing like that would put me in jail, stuff like that, all civil stuff. And I had all this crap happen to me. So now it's like, okay, so I, one thing, the, the major thing that happened is I, I got out the algorithm. So now I'm trying to get back in the algorithm. And also it was like I waited until my late 20s and especially into 30s to do what I love to do. And you know what I'm saying? It's like if I had it did that when it started, it would have been a lot easier. Because now everybody does uh, gaming. I, you know what I'm saying? Or streaming or some type of thing like that. And it's like if I hadn't got into it before, when I feel like the during the voting age and stuff like that, the chance of my channel could have took off already. But at the same time, <laughs> I haven't really been consistent for a year or anything. The longest I've been consistent. The longest I've been consistent is probably about it was about six months. And that no, about four months. And that was the time my channel had got like I went from like basically 10, 20 subscribers to over a hundred, almost two hundred. And then I had got I went from like twenty or forty thousand views to over a hundred thousand views, right? That was like my peak. And it was crazy. And then I had to stop and now I'm trying to get back in the algorithm and stuff like that. If I had I did this when I was younger, before, you know, I've had health problems and some other stuff when younger, but nothing that would like stop me from doing things. When I was, everything was more spoiled or more smoother in my life, there's a chance I could have already been taken off. But now I'm trying to get in here to where it does, when there's people are younger, they're doing a lot of different cuts, cuts it, some of it outrageous, which gets views. Farewell, Ashen Woman. Two, uh, a lot more people play. Arm soft type like games like the souls likes and stuff like that then they used to oops excuse me i got the kibbutz a lot more stuff is happening so it's harder to get in the algorithm and use it now because it's so saturated with different people doing different content and it's like what content makes you special like some people the fact that i'm talking about this and not and i'm and i'm still playing the game but it's not about the game they're not going to hear this they're going to skip to that it would be different if i already had a fan base then they want to hear that. Some people they're gonna want to hear it because it's the real, you know, it's the real stuff. The whole point of uh, connecting with people and stuff like that to YouTube is understanding, you know, what's real and what's not real, and just being honest and genuine, not trying to be something you're not. Like, so it's like if I just I thought about, you know, what if I spend this money making somebody edit my videos and try to make them funny or edit this and try to do that? I'm like. I can be funny when it's authentic, but me trying to force myself to make it... Did I do something wrong here? Shouldn't the honor thing be here? Or do I have to go kill over? Dying 
Dinosaurs. It, it really don't matter about doing a little quest or stuff like that. Or do I have to kill him first and then it'll be there? No, I forgot. He summons me. Yeah, that's what it is. I don't summon him. But anyways, um... Uh, yeah, and then, for me, what I usually do, like, if I'm talking, and it has nothing to do with the game or something, I'll put it in quotation marks. Or not quotation marks, I'll put it in a description, a timestamp, so they'll know, like, hey, this is gonna be talking about life, if you wanna skip it, here you go. Cause, like, I only, I'm funny in real life, in the sense of, if I have the conversation, that I'll be trying, but when it comes to stuff that happens, if something doesn't happen in the game that's not funny, I wouldn't wanna try to act like it's funny. Cause it's not real. But it's all about do people enjoy your content, are you good at the game, and stuff like that. And if you're not good at the game, do you suck bad bad enough that way it's funny and your dialogue is funny? So like, there are different reasons why different people watch your games. I know when I did Lies of Key, which is one of my most active comments, uh, and then it would be like Lords of the Crowd, that was more active, most people commented on my stuff like, Lies of Key was about eight to ten months ago I want to say and I got people still coming on the video right now literally somebody just commented on one of my shorts about the game and it was you know it's one of the games that got the most views on my channel and uh people still coming and we've been talking having fun and stuff like that but it's like certain people they might read the comments and be like what the heck is they talking about but it's like that with anybody so I'm really just trying to find my not my I guess my niche would be the word or, my fan base, but I know one of the things I get the most reactions to and stuff that people like watching the most of me play is either my shorts from Call of Duty or my shorts from games like this, Soul Slice, and playing Soul Slice on the channel. I noticed that he hasn't done the rain thing once with the rain of arrows. Watch he does it now. Oh. I don't know if it's because I keep closing the gap or what it is. But this is probably the easiest fight that I've had with him ever. You're messing me up. I don't know if that bonfire is going to be automatic lit or not. I can't remember. But I think the bonfire gets automatically lit. How many flasks do I have? Six? I may be able to do this Prince next Lothric fight. Prince is in your hands. Please save his soul. I usually can't do the Tell dance right like... what he must be a lord. Right after this, but we'll see. Right now, I'm going to try doing this one. But yeah, I'm really trying to get back in the algorithm and find my niche and stuff like that. Like, what works the best for me. But I know one thing is playing games that I actually enjoy. Because if I play games I don't enjoy, it's going to be in my tone. I'm always going to be negative about the game. I'm always going to, you know, whatever, whatever. And that's one reason why I had to stop playing those Fallen's. Because by the time I'm getting to my... I'm playing two playthroughs at once. A second and a third one. And I finished my second one, but I can't finish my third one because it was like... This game just had too many problems with it. I wasn't enjoying it anymore. And that's why now I'm taking it back slow after the 1.5 update and all that stuff like that. Uh, awesome chest is gone. And, um... So while I'm doing that, and getting back to talking to myself technically, <laughs> and stuff like that, and being on video and stuff like that... Well, I'm not really doing the face cam, except for on reaction videos. But uh, while I'm getting in there trying to get back in the algorithm, I'm still going to always be myself. I'm not going to overly try to be somebody I'm not and stuff like that. It, just, it won't work in my videos. It won't be me. And I can't just copy what somebody else is doing to try to be successful. That's why I say either it'll work or it won't. YouTube's more of a passion thing for me. Just like photography and all this stuff like that. It's more of a passion thing for me. Uh, and it's like, if I'm successful, I'm successful. In photography, I'm more successful in in it because I've done plenty of shoots I've shot over a thousand pictures uh, probably like somewhere around 10 to 30 thousand pictures like no cap so but you can shoot a lot of pictures in one photo shoot I've probably done somewhere between 
20 to 30 shoots or something like that. But I've had to take breaks of that. But now that I've got more time in my life, but it, since I'm getting older, I'm like, I need to focus on things that are the most important. You know what I'm saying? Especially if I want to settle down, get married and stuff like that. So it's like, I'll give YouTube two more years. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. You know, that's life. There's really nothing I can really do about that. So I'm going to do my best for it to work. You know what I'm saying? Like that. And like I said, I know, you know, the games, pretty much any game I play, I can beat. I can't remember, is it gonna be by the door? I think so. Like, it don't matter what type of game it is. I've always been great at gaming, and when I was growing up, you know, people kept saying, you should do YouTube, you should do YouTube, you should do YouTube. And then, but I kept putting it off and putting it off. Do I have to kill a horse? I may have to go kill a horse, so I may have to come back to this part. Or I may have messed up. Let me talk to this guy. I think if dude's sword is given to me, I messed up. It's been a while, so I can't remember all these quest lines exactly. Ah, uh, so. Ah, uh, I hope. I hope. Nah. No, I think it's the blacksmith, right? It's gonna give me that. And this is a what, a bow and a spell, right? Yeah, so maybe but when but it's up. Yeah, maybe it doesn't unlock now. So I need four, I still ain't got none of those, three of those. Take nine skills. Let's see, one. So it's one, two, and four. And then eight. Then I need a slab. So now this is on mark. Huh? I actually like the Eastern armor. It's basically the first samurai armor. I won't say the first samurai armor ever in the Souls game, because I can't remember if that's actually the case. But I know it's from Dark Souls 1. So it may be the first one inside of a Souls game. I can't remember. There might be a Samurai one where Demon Souls though, so don't quote me on that. Yeah, what are you talking about? No, there was another one. But that's basically, when I look at it, that's what I get the sense of. Yeah, guys see this video and there will be timestamps since I did have that little talk with y'all but sometimes you know just talk while you play have a real heart to heart but usually I'll just leave it about the games and stuff like that but like I said it's all about if you actually like my content and stuff like that I pretty much uh, sometimes games are challenging for me and sometimes they're just not 
So I try to play games that are more challenging for me, or in this case, it's just a nostalgia play through playing through the Souls games uh, again and stuff like that, because they're enjoyable to me. But I rarely find a game where I'm just like, man, this is hard, I can't beat this. Uh, I've just always been good at playing games, you know? Creating builds, doing some crazy stuff. But now it's like, uh, if you don't find something first before somebody else can do it, it's kind of hard to get in, you know, for the video to do good, because in the algorithm there's so many, there's millions of people doing YouTube, man. So, like, I think that's what helped me point out, is a lot of stuff I did inside of Laws of P, I did first, you know? Like, I'm pretty sure separate people that worked on the game and had the game, I, was one, I know for a fact I'm one of the first people to get all of the trees in, you know, the Platinum Laws of P, and also to get all of the trees in Platinum Laws of P, and your skill trees, you can get two more trees for beating the game each time, and getting all this stuff, unlocking the fifth endless slot, like all this stuff like that, people still now comment on the videos, like, you know, it's like, I mean, I found this stuff out a long time ago, you know what I mean? <laughs> We're the game first launch, and then I know the DLC is coming for that. I'm gonna get back in the Liza P when that comes out. Do the DLC for that. Do the Secret Elden Ring is coming out, and it's gonna be May, so we got like a month and two weeks or something like that. <laughs> We've had to play that. So I'm looking forward to stuff like that. Uh, shorts will be going up. Like I said, I've been saving them and uh, checking on them to make sure they didn't delete because now Xbox the notification to where these will be deleted. So I've been making sure that uh. I've been keeping them there so I can go back to, like how it says on um, Only Scholar of the Sin and stuff like that, Path of Exile, Dragon's Dogma 2, these are things that are on the Xbox Live, like the online part. Oh, excuse me. If I go to my console, it's got the Dark Souls 3, it's got some Cyberpunk, Call of Duty, Dark Souls 2, Dragon's Dogma, Path of Exile, some stuff that's saved on there and some stuff that's not. So console stuff so what i'm probably gonna do like i said uh tomorrow because it's gonna be in this is the last episode of the session today it's uh it's late <laughs> not really too late for me i'm gonna go through here in any of these that i want to keep or upload i'm gonna download on my phone and i'm uploading to youtube i'm trying to upload only the best content from these some of these are just screenshots of stuff there must be a reason i have it um i'll probably just save those those for like later on when my social medias and stuff when well, my channel gets bigger and then I start really focusing on trying to push my social media for the channel because I mean they ain't been doing stuff like that. I'm trying to get the channel up first before I worry about social medias. And then I'll just start posting some of this stuff, you know, some of this Monster Hunter and stuff like that. But a lot of this is uh pictures, but this the videos and stuff I look for the best of it and stuff like that and post it. So I love you guys and see you in the next video. This is Country Kid Game. If you like what you don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And let me know down below. I may not better do this right away. But some games you think I might be interested in, and then I might check some of them out. Like I said, I won't be able to just do everything right away. Because right now I'm doing this. I'm doing Lords of the Fallen. And I might end up doing Second or, or Elden Ring before the DLC comes out for Shadow of the Earth Tree. And then I'm also playing some stuff like in the spare time. Because I also just don't want to play games I like for fun and record them at the same time. Sometimes I just want to play the game. You know what I'm saying? And then I also do no commentary on some of my videos. And I'm thinking about, like I said, at the end of my PLE thing, I might do another playthrough doing this league. Or I might wait to the next league. I'm not really sure yet. Because I, I didn't really know what kind of class I wanted to do after I did my first full playthrough of a PLE season. Um, I didn't do the in-game content, but the first, for me time, the first time we beat the campaign and all the stuff like that. So I might see on that later. So I'll, we'll talk about it later. But I'll see you guys.